Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my investment series. The series in which I try to teach you guys all that I know about investing, making money, online businesses and finance. And today we're taking a look at the art of retiring early and how to do it. So the most crucial step out of it all is to determine your lifestyle and to press the like button if you've not already done so because it helps me out a ton and there's no ads on these videos. So to determine your lifestyle, you gotta look at what type of life you want to live. For example, do you wanna drive a Lamborghini all day? Do you wanna travel the world, go to all different places and whatnot? Make sure you have a rough plan of what you wanna do. To be able to retire early, you have to have a definite, if not very accurate idea of what you want to do once you've retired because it's all very important to know what type of budget you got to work with and how much money you got to save up to be able to retire. So go ahead and write some things down that you would like to do and what the prices of those things are and also write down what you think your monthly expenses will be so for example if you got a house write down your expenses uh, if you have a for example a car write it down your insurances write everything down and if you've done all of that you've got a little bit of a budget also add some things that you would like to do for example the traveling or the the Lamborghini all those things just look up some prices and and put it in there so you have a rough estimate of what you'll be spending each month and here for example is I guess an example of a budget a $3,500 one it's a little bit on the high side I do not believe most of us will have a $3,500 budget but hey it, it is what it is and uh, as you can see here a thousand dollars for rent 250 for utilities 500 for insurance 200 for car 100 for clothing 300 for food 50 for phone 150 entertainment 100 for travel fund and this fund just means that you won't necessarily spend a hundred dollars on travel this month but at least you're kind of saving it up in a sort of fund for example if you want to travel once a year then you have twelve hundred dollars to spend two hundred dollars a month on hobbies two hundred on savings a hundred for extras a hundred for home and car repair and two hundred fifty dollars for possible gifts and whatnot but yes you're noting here that or at least what you most likely noticed is that most of your budget is taken away by this rent and it's a whopping one thousand dollars or almost a third of your whole budget and that's one of the most important points that i have to make for all of you and that is that if you're still renting a place or or planning to rent a place it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you to retire because you're just gonna need a lot more money each month so my tip is to not even have a mortgage open, uh, which might be a little bit less net uh, in mortgage payments, but really to pay off all your debt before getting into retiring. It's very important that your monthly expenses are as low as possible. And you know, with, with this big, big, big price tag on the rent and possible extra utilities because of this rented apartment possibly i don't even know exactly or maybe some extra insurances that come with renting an apartment it's just not worth it you know it's, it's way too expensive to retire early and i would really recommend most people to just first fix their uh, mortgage and then look into the art of retiring but all right the next step in our guide is to start planning of course you've determined your lifestyle you know what you you need but you kind of don't, right? Because, well, you haven't planned anything out. You know what your monthly expenses will be, but what now, right? What now? Well, that's where the planning phase comes in. What's your annual income? How much money do you have right now? How much have you invested? How much cash do you have? All those things will play a role separately in calculating what you need to do next. How much debt do you have? What's your spending, which we saw on the previous side? That's like your, your budget that you made. Uh, what do you want to do when you retire? How much can you invest monthly and how much can you invest at all, right? All those things you got to know. You got to write them down for yourself and you got to put it into the one of these three calculators. But don't go there right now yet. Uh, we got to first talk about something before you put your numbers into uh, these calculators. And there are actually two very important distinctions that I need to make between uh, retiring early or really retiring in general, there are two different ways to go about it. The first one is to 
Retire as early as possible, and I'm hoping you guys can really see this, this part still. Yes, you can. Retire early and live off of less. Here you will retire as early as possible by lowering the spending each month. So basically, the budget you just created, you try to tone every single one of those spendings down a little bit as much as you possibly can by not having that rent, by having your insurances as low as possible, possibly getting rid of your car, possibly getting rid of some extra travel expenses, everything. You try to make it as low as possible so you can retire as early as possible. And again, more will follow on that in a little second. The second thing you can do is to retire a little bit later and have more money to spend each month to do what you want. And of course, time is key here because we're working with compounded interest and investments. Well, it's pretty obvious to know that the longer you wait, the more you're also going to be having. And thus, you might have to weigh off a little bit how much the waiting is worth it to you and for you. Because the earlier you retire, the less money you'll most likely have. Moving over into the next phase, and that is investing. That is purely the reason why I didn't tell you guys to go in and look at these calculators yet, because you don't know what type of ROI you're going to get, right? Because most likely you've not thought about where you're going to put your money in yet. Like, what are you going to do to make a great return? Well, you got to start investing. Now, that's well, now that you've determined all factors, it's time to start investing. What return will we be able to make each year? And that's where most likely your own knowledge is going to kick in. Where are you going to reinvest your money in? Are you going to go for the stock market, S&P 500, uh, maybe a, a bond index or indices or whatever it's called? What are you going to go for? Individual stocks? There's a lot of different options, even high interest savings accounts. Uh, you just got to look up a couple of the percentages. Here you can see, for example, some S&P returns. Let's say, for example, that that is 7% each year on average. Might be a little bit higher, but that's just uh, something you can you know, take home with you. Let's say, for example, a 7% annual return is pretty doable. Go back into this calculator. Just go to one of these three. Uh, you just type it into your computer or your internet browser, you'll find one of them, or type in retirement calculator. Just put in all those numbers in there, and you'll know the amount you got or are going to get. And now there's two approaches to this all. The passive income approach. Invest all the money you can in the markets, like, for example, the S&P 500, which we just said. The pro to that is there's not really much work needed, and you will also keep earning money while you have retired, right? Because... Your money's not gone all of a sudden. You're taking some out, but all the money that's left in there will still be accumulating more and more money. So that's a very good approach for that. The con to this is that most likely since the return is relatively high but not optimal, you'll retire later and you're pretty reliant on the market returns. Because if the market goes down, this might be a year for you with no profits and it might also lead to some further problems down the line, which is why there are positive and negative sides to all of this. Um, the passive income approach can also be applied to high interest savings accounts or bonds. They all work the same way. You just put some money in and never look back at it. Then there's also the active approach, the active income approach. Grow your income each month by, for example, buying income machines like YouTube or Instagram accounts. And a couple of you guys that know me know that I have a lot of Instagram accounts as well. And I'm actually you know, owning a lot of YouTube accounts, which you've never seen before, but I do own them as well. We generate a lot of income. However, they are some work. And with some, I mean, they're quite a lot of work for quite a good return. Definitely a lot more than the S&P 500, but also it's active work, right? So a pro to it is you're in control of your money because you're not that reliant on market. You're more so in control yourself, not so reliant on market and can easily adjust for bigger dreams. For example, if you decided, man, I, I do want that Lambo, it's a lot simpler to just, you know, work a little bit harder towards one of these income machines that you've acquired or made yourself. You don't even need an investment for this. Instead of with the S&P 500 where you just got to hope and pray, <laughs> like there's not that much you can do except for investing more money or trying to beat the market, which is not that recommended. The con to this is that it's hard work, you need business skills, and it's just a lot of general work in comparison to the previous one. So you need a couple of things to make this work. It's not for everybody, and it's also, again, not the simplest and least time-consuming. Now... 
that you've decided what type of return you can get, put it into the calculator, determine what you're going to be doing with it, and the last step to it all is to just retire. If you watch this whole video without taking action, just know it from me, with less than $1 million, it is going to be difficult. Here are a couple of tips to retire early. So basically, uh, one of the things I must state to you guys all is that without a $1 million just laying around, if you're going to go for the S&P 500 method, it's going to be pretty difficult uh, because with the S&P 500 method, if you have a $1 million, you're putting it in there you're estimating a 7% return. What happens then is you'll get 70,000 each year, right? On average. Out of these 70,000, you're taking away 40,000 for your own spending, which is roughly $3,500 a month. Um, you're taking 1%, for example, you know, ish 1% for the tax on your money. You're taking another 1% or so, yeah, I would say to just grow your money you know, just normally and another 1% to adjust a little bit for inflation. You could also say you're taking 4% out to spend, which is again, $3,500 a month or 40,000 a year. You're taking 2% for inflation and 1% for tax. That way your money will keep growing with inflation and you'll never be out less. And again, if your average return each year is 8%, you have 2% for inflation inflation, and 1% above it even to make sure that you're always, um, you know, making money every single year, which is a pretty damn good thing. And basically to just go ahead and take action right now as we are talking, just go ahead and plan all these things and, and look at the numbers because it might really amaze you how early you are able to do it if you work hard enough or, you know, work the right way. But keep in mind, it might be a lot longer than you expected as well. I actually forgot I had these three items here, so I don't know if there's anything inside of them still. Let me quickly take a little bit of a look. Oh yeah, get rid of debt. Get rid of debt as soon as possible. This is the biggest retirement killer. This is something I also and already explained in the beginning of the video. Debt is gonna make everything so much more difficult. It's a very yeah, high, profit taking thing i don't even know how to explain it it's just going to take a lot of your money away if you don't get rid of it as soon as possible so that's why i recommend everybody to get rid of debt before looking into retirement if you've got a mortgage going on it will take so much more money to retire that it's, it's really worth it to just pay that off first and then look into it if that's not your plan then that might be so but it's going to be a lot more difficult and you should know about it second tip here is to lower your monthly spending again this is optional, all of these are, but it's tips to retire earlier, and that is to possibly stick to the minimum by trying to make your expenses as low as possible. I explained this method in the beginning of the video by saying again, just fine tune all your spendings each month to the lowest amount possible. Might not be the most luxurious life, but it will be a very quiet life because you have retired. So again, again you can think of it in a couple of different ways. Also, one thing to note is that you can also retire, right? And once you've retired, think about new things to do in your spare time and maybe look for some hobbies that generate some extra money for your, for your newer, I guess, spending habits that you might pick up there. But at least you might be done with your 9 to 5 job that you have right now. Again, that might be something you want to go for. It's completely possible. Nothing is off the table. Nothing is off limits. And three possibly work a second job. If you want to retire early, it's gonna be taking some money. And if you work more jobs, you get there faster. And this actually only works for the investing approach. It's not completely true, but if you're investing, most likely your whole goal is to just keep investing more and more money as soon as possible so you can get those returns over the year, over and over the year again. And really, it's not about making money every single month that's going to do good for investing. It's getting the most amount of money as soon as possible to, you know, let it accumulate more money. And thus, you know, working a second job for, let's say, for example, the next coming months might help you out a ton because you've got more starting capital to invest with. Or you might, you know, have more money each month to invest right now to make sure you can retire earlier. So that's again another very good tip for if you wanna retire as soon as possible to just get the most amount of income for the upcoming, you know, maybe like three years or something like that. So you're, uh, again, as close to retirement as soon as possible. And that was actually most of the guide and most that you guys needed to know about. At first, you gotta determine your lifestyle, put all of the numbers into a little bit of a budget. Then you gotta start planning as to how you're gonna get there. 
because I mean it's not a it's not a magic thing, right? You gotta get those numbers in, you gotta calculate everything, then you gotta press the like button to show that you appreciated this video and help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and then actually start investing or buying some things to make you more money. And again, there's actually not really many other ways to go about it. Just by working normally and not having some big income things, it's gonna be taking a lot more time. It's gonna be very, very difficult to do. And then the last step is the easiest out of them all is to sit back and get money by being retired. So guys, thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I have a couple of videos planned for this series, the investment series, that are gonna be coming up relatively soon. So please support the channel by pressing the like button and subscribing and comment down below what you enjoyed or what you wanna see next. And I'll see you guys again in another finance video. Take care everybody and have a very, very nice day.